The idea of swinging low to high for topspin is indeed a deeply ingrained belief in tennis, often considered sacred in teaching the forehand technique. However, a closer examination reveals that the understanding of low to high may not be as straightforward as commonly perceived. High-speed video analysis challenges the traditional idea that the forward swing should begin significantly below the ball, possibly by one or two feet. Instead, modern analysis, particularly in the context of the windshield wiper forehand, suggests that the actual starting position can vary and may not require such a drastic downward trajectory. When dissecting the concept of low to high, it's essential to consider two primary reference points, the racket hand and the racket head. Depending on which point is observed, the interpretation of the swing path can vary significantly. While many associate the low to high path with the movement of the hand, the reality revealed by high speed video analysis indicates that the hand itself typically starts only a few inches below the ball at the initiation of the forward swing. High-speed footage shows us many examples of the hand starting just below the level of the ball. There are also a number of examples where we can see that the hand appears to start at what is the same height as the ball. Now, even stranger is that we can even find examples where the hand starts above the ball and still produces a heavy topspin shot. Understanding the windshield wiper in tennis is crucial to unraveling this seeming contradiction. It's a widespread technique in the modern game, especially the part before the racket makes contact. Most explanations of the windshield wiper focus on the racket's path after contact point, where the racket tip can rotate up to 180 degrees. Picture the racket tip facing one sideline at contact, then quickly rotating in about a tenth of a second until it points to the opposite sideline, essentially drawing a half circle. That's the wiper finish. But what you need to understand is that the windshield wiper starts well before the contact point, and it originates from the slot position. You'll notice that the motion starts from the shoulder joint driven by the rotation of the upper arm. The hand, arm, and racket move together, turning over as a single unit from the slot. During the backswing, the arm and racket can also rotate backward. This backward rotation causes the racket head to move downward and backward. Understanding this backward rotation, which is a byproduct of going with the body first and the arm being along for the ride, is crucial for grasping the path of the forward swing and what low to high really means. It's because the racket arm doesn't just rotate forwards from contact, there's a little bit of kickback. This backward rotation positions the racket head below the ball regardless of the hand's actual height. Most professional forehands in modern tennis exhibit some degree of this backward rotation, and it can be pretty deceiving. The extent of the backward rotation varies, just like the forward rotation described earlier. In some cases, it can be as much as 90 degrees, causing the racket tip to almost point down at the court. With this backward rotation, the forward windshield wiper action begins well before contact. This means the racket head is already moving upward through the rotation of the hand and arm from the shoulder. This clarifies why the hand height might seem paradoxical. When the arm rotates backward, the hand can be above the ball while the racket head remains below. The powerful forward or upward rotation of the hitting arm is crucial for the low to high motion. This rotation speed and extent explain the high spin rates seen in pro tennis, where players often generate over 3,000 RPMs on the forehand shots, reaching speeds of 90 or 100 miles per hour. How does this connect with the traditional idea of brushing the ball for topspin? Well, there's no conflict. They complement each other. 
Brushing comes from the arm's lifting action from the shoulder, seen in animations where the hand and arm lift the racket to brush the balls back. This brushing action occurs simultaneously with the wiper rotation. However, the wiper rotation is capable of generating far more racket speed than the traditional lifting and brushing alone. Again, this helps explain why the racket hand can be at or even above the level of forehands hit with such tremendous spin. The game of tennis, and especially pro tennis, is extremely dynamic. The speed and complexity of the strokes means critical moments are invisible to the naked eye. Now, here are the key takeaways from this video. One is to set the hand at the height of the ball, but there's no need to get carried away with how precise this is. Naturally, your hand will be slightly below or sometimes slightly above the ball, depending on the scenario. The important thing is that from the slot at the completion of the backswing, you focus on driving forwards and not so much upwards. And this forward arm extension should be complemented with a full windshield wiper motion, where the racket tip travels from sideline to sideline as you drive through the ball. The more you experiment with this, you may find that developing a fast driven ball that still has great amounts of spin is much easier than you thought. In any event, thanks for tuning in and use what you've learned to modernize your game. A lot of people are trying to fix the symptoms and not the system for their shots. If you want an entire teaching system that is devoted to solving the problems that are impeding players' success, check out my online course. You can click the link in my bio for more information.